still on wake fit simulations in the last video i showed how one could run the longitudinal wake fit simulation that's to get the longitudinal spectrum of the excited modes in the cavity um, in cst studio in this video i'm going to be showing how to run the um, transverse wake field simulation so um, if you haven't seen the previous video i suggest you go and do it because i kind of brush over the key concepts here and go over these equations not really in details but yeah i think i or i hope sufficient enough to have an idea so just like with the um, long it's now with simulation i go into csc studio and i select particle or um, what I'll do is instead I'll select uh, maybe high frequency or any of these, but um, I'll select high frequency and I'll show you how you can change the simulation type from high frequency to particle in when you've already opened the project. So I'll choose high frequency and currently you can see if I should click this, then you have your time domain solver, frequency domain solver, eigen mode solver, integral solver and all of the other options but then you do not have your weak field solver first of all let me change so i don't forget change to working megahertz okay so we are set now and now to change the um simulation type we go to problem type and then from here you could see high frequency optical so the same the same options as you had let's see the same options as you had here so you could also change it inside of once you've already opened the project so you just go to problem type and you click on this and then you go to particle and then you can change to weak field or particle in cell or track it so we want the weak field solver so it changes to weak field and then the other options um, automatically show up so that's one way now since i've already modeled the tesla cavity or do five cell tesla cavity I'll just go ahead and import it. I think I could also import from my previous project. So I have a lot of projects here. I think this should be it or this. I think this should be the correct one, if I'm not mistaken. Or I could just import from the previous tutorial, the previous um, video. I could also import from Wakefield um, simulation project. So I could import this 3D model missing OK. I think there's a problem with that so i might just get the whole cavity and hope it's the correct geometry okay so yes we have our model and then i could go ahead and turn off the walking plane it's kind of annoying sometimes okay now um i think the Okay, I'll just go ahead and check. Since we already have the model, I'll just go ahead and check on my frequency range. I could go up to, I don't know, I think 4,000 because we're going to be um, exciting a beam of 25 millimeter bunch length. I think 4,000 should be okay. And um, background, as usual, change from normal to PEC, um, perfect electric conductor. And then, um, yeah, background and then the boundary conditions. I want the electric so perfect electric conditions apply to all directions and then I change the Z Z mean and Z maximum to open open boundary condition so where I'm going to be um, I'm initializing my port now I can't remember if for the longitudinal I also defined ports yeah I mean you could also define it without ports but then um, if you want to check how much energy goes out from each of the ports, goes out from the beam pipes, and um, yeah, because sometimes you could also equip this with higher order mode couplers. I think maybe this is going too far, but um, just know that you could um, leave it um, like this, open boundary conditions, or you could, as I'll do later, I'll define um, port modes. I'll, I'll define waveguide ports at the ends of this cavity so we have a boundary condition set no symmetry planes although this is symmetric so we could make use of a symmet symmetry plane but i'll just leave that for now so this is what we have and um, we've defined our boundary condition now we need a source um if a particle beam 
and we can define that from here now um, 25 millimeters so this is um sigma which is your bunch length so 25 millimeters and then transmission line if it's not already on transmission line it's more it's more accurate it converges faster than the analytic um, method current injection scheme i would link a paper that you can read about that yeah and um yes yeah, so for the longitudinal wake field we didn't um, touch this but then for the transverse wake field what we want to do is for the longitudinal we excited the beam just at the central axis but then for the transverse we want to offset the beam so we want to study um what happens or rather the effect of off axis beam because now the ideal is that okay all the beams are on the axis but then in reality you have that some beams are off axis so we want to check the effect of off axis beams on a different on a on a beam a trailing beam that is moving just after it so we want to check the fields deposited the effects of the field deposited by off axis beams on um trailing beams that are also off axis so that defines the transverse um that that defines your transverse um, wake impedance so um for this i would define a i could do it on x or y but um let me do it on y so i could define an offset which i would call offset and um then i would also now the wake integration method use indirect interfaces i can't remember if in the last video i used indirect test beam but then i realized that indirect test beams doesn't work when you have your system set up like this it gives some it gives an error that the indirect test beams intersects with a perfect electric conductor okay maybe that doesn't make sense but just um, use indirect interfaces instead it's almost it's as accurate as some um, indirect test beams so indirect interfaces and then make sure to turn on your cosine square filtering the last one i did not turn it on and it gave some kind of it gave a lot of noise in the result and then now we have offset here and then this is very important here we want to integrate so we want to check out the effect on a negative offset so i'll click ok if i should try to preview i haven't defined offset so i could define it here i could have also done it earlier by defining it on my parameters list so um i'll give a 10 10 millimeter offset should be okay i mean it could also be five but i'll leave it as um 10 millimeter offset so we're done defining the beam now we could look at the beam now you see that the beam is um, offset from the axis so this is the beam and then the integration part even though you cannot see it now is also is offset on the opposite direction i think i could um okay yeah you really can't see it here but then the integration part we want to take is we is um along somewhere around here so minus 10 on the opposite side so that is very important that they are set opposite or else you won't um get correct results so once again we have that we offset the global beam direction to off axis beams which would um create your transverse um, fields so that's um the offset and then the wake integration part so the part along which we want to integrate um, the wake field is offset so negative so on the opposite side the offset and also make sure to apply your cosine filtering and this is indirect interface so with that we are ready i hope to run our simulation okay we could also look at our mesh um this is the default which is um 15 so cells per wavelength 15 i think 10 is kind of a good minimum but um let's see how many mesh cells we have with 15. okay we have about 2.6 million okay i think that's 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 okay and okay so if you also notice our uh, mesh is um hexahedral so for your weak field simulation i don't know if i mentioned this in the last video but for your weak field simulation you only have the option of um 
hexahedral meshes you can't use a mutetral tetrahedral meshes so um and you could also read up on this on the csc um, help page they list the different sol solvers and the meshes that are possible with them and um, for weak field it doesn't um, support um, tetrahedral mesh so i think with that we should be ready hopefully i haven't forgotten anything and now the simulated weak length um to get a good resolution i think i could uh, or just use 50,000 so that it doesn't take too much time. So 50,000 just means I'm um, 50 meters of um, weak length. So I could start this. Yeah, hopefully I didn't miss anything. And I'll pause the video. And when the simulation is done out, I would come back to it. Okay, the simulation is done and good enough. I did not mess anything up. And um, yeah, so just looking at the message to see if there are any errors. This software is licensed, okay, no errors. And um, transmission, okay. Successfully finished, okay. And yes, so um, I think this is okay yes so i think this should be closed yes but how come i think i could close it yes so yeah once you're done with the simulation you should have 1d results i don't know why it's what it's okay so you should have your 1d results and in your 1d results you can see energy the particle beams and um, you see the wake impedance and the wake potential so we could look at this but it doesn't really mean <laughs> anything except you can understand this in time domain but what we're interested in is the wake field impedance and since we excited the beam we have set the beam on the y axis which we see here we go to look at the wake field impedance the y um, impedance and this gives you the transverse impedance spectrum so i could log this and then maybe zoom to see the transverse impedance spectrum and yeah that's it for this um, cavity i think what i could also do is i could also show the um okay yeah i had to pause that because i had to make sure that i run because i run exactly the same simulation with a different software I'm a 2D software and I had to check if I still had the file. So I could also show the um the wake field MP, the transverse wake field impedance using a different software, just kind of as a confirmation. So um if I should open that. Oof, lots of yes, although you wouldn't. So this is with a different software and this is the weak potential. So if I should go to the Y weak potentials and you look at this is kind of similar. But then what we're interested in is the weak impedance. So the Y weak impedance and then yeah, this is it. Around um, almost 2 gigahertz because this is in gigahertz so around 2 gigahertz you see this kind of profile this is the smallest and then the highest impedance and just like that the same profile so with two different um, softwares so yeah that's it for the transverse wake impedance simulation and um, yeah am I missing anything you can go ahead and save your file is there anything I'm missing? Yeah, nothing. Yeah, that's it for this um, video. Um, okay, in the next video, I'll just show briefly how to, where you can get your loss and um, kick factors from after you run this simulation. So, till then, bye.